working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Good evening, I'm Alma Angeles. You're watching ASEAN in Focus on tonight's headlines. Tensions between the United States and China continue to escalate with yet another alarming incident involving their high-powered militaries. A Chinese warship and a U.S. destroyer had a close call in the Taiwan Strait, raising concerns about the stability of the region. The Philippines and Sweden are joining forces to strengthen their partnership in environmental protection and explore ways to expedite Sweden's transition towards a greener future. And later, we bring you reports from two significant locations, New York and Moscow, where the Philippine embassies are hosting grand events to commemorate the 125th Philippine Independence Day celebrations. And tonight, tensions between the U.S. and China are reaching new heights as their high-powered militaries find themselves entangled in yet another alarming incident. This time, it occurred in the vital waterway of the Taiwan Strait. A Chinese warship and a U.S. destroyer recently had a dangerously close encounter. Jeff Sanidad reports from Washington, D.C. Tensions between the United States and China continue to escalate, with yet another alarming incident involving their high-powered militaries. A Chinese warship and a U.S. destroyer had a close call in the Taiwan Strait, raising concerns about the stability of the region. Here you can witness the dangerous moment when a Chinese warship crossed the path of an American destroyer, directly in the line of the bow. The Pentagon reports that the Chinese vessel came within a mere 150 yards of the U.S. ship, forcing the American crew to rapidly reduce their speed to avert a potential collision. These are uh, part and parcel of uh, an increasing level of aggressiveness by uh, the PLA, the PRC's military, uh, in particular in the area of the Taiwan Straits and in the South China Sea. One, the air, air intercept was over the South China Sea and the maritime intercept that you talk about was in the Straits. Um, and sadly, this is just part, uh, again, of a growing aggressiveness by the PRC that we're, that we're dealing with and we're prepared to address it. Notably, this incident was observed by a Canadian ship trailing the American destroyer, adding an additional layer of international attention. These events unfolded while U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was attending an international conference in Singapore, further highlighting the critical nature of the situation. We won't be deterred by dangerous operational behavior at, or at sea or in international airspace. People's Republic of China continues to conduct an alarming number of risky intercepts of U.S and allied aircraft flying lawfully in international airspace. And the more that we talk, the more we can avoid the misunderstandings and miscalculations that could lead to crisis or conflict. However, Secretary Austin's attempt to engage with the Chinese Defense Minister were met with minimal cooperation as their interaction amounted to a simple handshake. And a speech vowing to use force against anyone who tries to come between China and Taiwan. One fact is clear. Taiwan is an, a, is an inalienable part of China. The Chinese government and the Chinese military will never tolerate any incident that could lead to a divided China. Just 12 days ago, a Chinese jet dramatically crossed the path of a U.S. reconnaissance plane over the South China Sea, causing significant disturbance and endangering the crew on board. Additionally, last December, another Chinese jet intercepted an American electronic surveillance plane, forcing the U.S. crew to make a sudden course of adjustment to avoid a potential mid-air collision when the Chinese plane came within an alarmingly close distance of 20 feet. What I would tell you from our perspective is we're flying, we're sailing, 
were operating in international airspace and international waters. And both of those incidents were in, com in com uh, complete compliance with international law. There was absolutely no need for the PLA to act as aggressively as they did. So it, it won't be long before somebody gets hurt. Uh, that's, the, that's the concern with these unsafe and unprofessional intercepts. Uh, they can lead to misunderstandings. They can lead to miscalculations. When you have pieces of metal, Addressing the current state of affairs, the Chinese Defense Minister, in a speech at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore, accused the U.S. of adopting a Cold War mentality and said that relationships between the two countries have reached an unprecedented low point. The Cold War mentality is now resurging and greatly increases security risks of block confrontation in the Asia-Pacific. Some big power continue to promote uh, its so-called Indo-Pacific strategy. China holds that no strategy should be based on ideological grounds. People cannot but ask these questions. Who is disrupting peace in the region? What are the root causes of chaos and instability? And what should we stay vigilant and guard against? We in China believe that the key for countries to live in harmony is mutual respect and treating each other as equals. In Washington, D.C., Jeff Sanidad, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Back to you, Alma. Thanks, Jeff. Meanwhile, Vietnam's capital city, Hanoi, is taking drastic measures to combat the scorching heat wave and alleviate pressure on the city's electricity supply. Faced with record-breaking temperatures, Hanoi has made the decision to switch off certain street lights to conserve energy as the demand for air conditioning skyrockets. To reduce electricity consumption, parks throughout the city are now engulfed in darkness after 11 p.m., creating a surreal nocturnal atmosphere. Additionally, two-thirds of street lights are also being turned off at the same hour, leaving many roads dimly lit during the late hours. Scientists have repeatedly warned that global warming is causing extreme weather events, including intense heat waves. Vietnam itself experienced its highest ever recorded temperature in early May, reaching a scorching 44.1 degrees Celsius or 111.38 degrees Fahrenheit, surpassing a previous record set in 20. 2019. The country has been grappling with multiple heat waves, with another one occurring in late May. The surge in demand for air conditioners and fans has placed tremendous strain on the national power system, prompting the state electricity company EVN to issue warnings. Với tôi, tôi là một người di chuyển vào buổi tối khá là nhiều. Thì tôi thấy là cái việc cắt giảm đèn điện của của thành phố nó nó có ảnh hưởng đôi chút làm cho đường nó tối hơn đường tối hơn và cũng 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 có chút ảnh hưởng nhưng tuy nhiên thì đối với tôi thì tôi cảm thấy là mọi thứ đều cũng vẫn có thể vẫn có thể thể chấp nhận được Đấy, và tất nhiên là đối với tôi thì cái chủ trương của thành phố đây là một chủ trương rất rất, rất tốt giúp cho tiết kiệm tiết giảm nhiên liệu uh, tiết kiệm uh, điện năng mình thì nghĩ là có thể điều tiết cho phù hợp thôi chứ còn cũng không nhất thiết phải kéo dài cả tuần ví dụ như là ngày trong tuần lưu lượng người thấp thì mình có thể giảm nhưng mà cuối tuần mấy ngày cuối tuần thứ bảy người chẳng hạn thì có thể tăng cái lượng đèn hơn thì, thì, thì the situation now is further exacerbated by a severe drought in northern Vietnam, which has led to significantly lower water levels at hydropower dams, reducing their power generating capacity by 30 to 40 percent. In response to EVN's calls for energy conservation, Hanoi Public Lighting Company, known as Hapulico, has implemented measures to adjust the city's street light schedule. Public lighting now starts half an hour hour later than usual and ends half an hour earlier, ensuring some relief for the energy grid. The Philippines and Sweden are joining forces to strengthen their partnership in environmental protection and explore ways to expedite Sweden's transition towards a greener future. Swedish Ambassador to Manila, Annika Thunberg, expressed on Tuesday night that Stockholm's priorities are in perfect sync with President Marcus's administration. And they both place great importance on security, the rule of law, and achieving a successful green transition. Let's listen in. I believe it is a kind of our, it's, it's a sign of our kindred spirits how well these priorities also equal those of President Marcos and the Philippines. 
and they are well in line with how we in Team Sweden engage here in the Philippines. Ever since the reopening of the Swedish Embassy in Manila back in 2016, interactions between these two nations have been on the rise. And this has led to exciting opportunities for increased collaboration in various sectors, including trade, maritime affairs, energy, defense, and science and technology. The synergy between the Philippines and Sweden sets the stage for robust engagement and exchange of knowledge in tackling environmental challenges and embracing sustainable practices. We need safe and secure borders to build socioeconomically sustainable societies. We need the international rules-based system to preserve our planet for future generations. And we need the green transition to build peace and stability. Everything is connected. And great news for Filipino travelers, Canada has expanded its Electronic Travel Authorization or ETA program to include the Philippines, allowing eligible Filipinos to enjoy visa-free entry when traveling by air for business or leisure purposes. Now this move aims to make it easier for more people to visit Canada and strengthen people-to-people -people ties. The Canadian Embassy in Manila has announced that the inclusion is effective immediately and covers Philippine passport holders who have held a Canadian visitor's visa in the past 10 years or a valid U.S. non-immigrant visa. Eligible Filipinos now only need to apply for an ETA, which can be done through Canada.ca slash ETA at a cost of 7 Canadian dollars or approximately 300 pesos. Most ETA applications are automatically approved within minutes, offering a faster and more affordable travel option. It's important to note that those traveling to Canada by means other than air or who are not eligible for an ETA will still require a visitor visa. President Marcus Jr. has reassured overseas Filipino workers of his administration's unwavering dedication to their safety and well-being. The president made this commitment on the occasion of National Migrant Workers Day, joining the entire nation in honoring the contributions of our hard-working OFWs. In a video message shared on his official Facebook page, President Marcus emphasized the Philippine government's efforts to strengthen ties with host countries to ensure that our OFWs are provided with a secure working environment. We understand the challenges that you face being far from your loved ones, adjusting to new cultures and overcoming barriers. And that's why this administration will continue to foster stronger ties with countries that host our migrant workers, ensuring your safety, welfare, and well-being. As you build your dreams in far-off lands and seas, do know that you are not alone. The entire nation stands with you every step of the way. And all of us are united in pride and in admiration for the work that gives you meaning and purpose. He then praised the overseas Filipino workers as true modern heroes, acknowledging their remarkable contributions to both the Philippines and their host countries. He also expressed deep admiration for the sacrifices and hard work of our OFWs, stating that their unwavering dedication has nurtured dreams, improved livelihoods, and played a vital role in driving progress in our nation. In every corner of the globe, you have left an indelible mark that uplifted both your host countries and our nation in the process. Your contributions have enriched the lives of countless individuals and societies to your different professions and capacities. Now, according to data released by the Philippine Statistics Authority in December 2021, there are approximately 1.83 million OFWs spread across different corners of the world. Migrant Workers' Day, celebrated every June 7, holds great significance as it commemorates the enactment of Republic Act 8042, also known as the Migrant Workers Act of 1995. This pivotal legislation emphasizes the recognition of the invaluable contributions made by OFWs to our nation. In a gathering of Filipino Chinese business leaders, President Marcus expressed his commitment to enhancing the business environment in the Philippines. During the oath-taking ceremony of the new officers of the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, the President assured the attendees that his administration is diligently working towards improving the ease of doing business in the country. Let's listen in. 
Cognizant of the concerns of the sector, we will of course continue to listen and exert efforts to improve business climate and foster ease and efficiency of doing business. We have taken note of the issues that you have raised during our meeting last year and have already initiated many steps and adjustments to address those challenges. Recognizing the importance of fostering a conducive environment for entrepreneurship and investment, he also emphasized the administration's determination to address the issues that hinder the growth and prosperity of businesses in the country. As in every mutually beneficial partnership, the Federation will rest assured that this administration will continue to support this healthy relationship. It is no, not only a healthy relationship, it is one that we consider to be a necessary partnership. And I think that uh, it has been made clear that the policy of this administration is to have us in the critical partners in the transformation of our economy as criti critical partners in the private sector. The Philippine Embassy in Russia recently held a grand diplomatic reception at the prestigious Radisson Collection Hotel in Moscow. This remarkable event was organized to commemorate the 125th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence. Emi Coloma reports from Moscow, Russia. The Philippine Embassy in Russia hosted a grand diplomatic reception of the Radisson Collection Hotel in Moscow on June 6, 2023. In commemoration of the 125th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence, this significant occasion brought together distinguished diplomats representing various countries across Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East, as well as prominent businessmen, Filipino students, and leaders of the Filipino community, PILCOM, from Moscow and the Far East region of Russia. The esteemed guest speaker of the evening was none other than the Philippine Ambassador to Russia, Igor Bailen. In his inaugural remarks, Ambassador Bailen emphasized the utmost importance of ensuring the well-being and welfare of the Filipino community residing in Russia. Our theme for this year's celebration, Kalayaan, Kinabukasan, Kasaysayan, Freedom, Future history reflects our maturity and aspiration as one nation in partnership with the international community. The Philippines and Russia share almost 50 years of diplomatic relations. This gesture not only highlights the diplomatic event's celebratory nature, but also underscores the deep-rooted commitment to the Filipino people living abroad. It is worth noting that diplomatic ties between the Philippines and Russia were officially established on June 2, 1976. But our people-to-people -people relations go back over 200 years. Under Tsar Alexander I, the Irish-American businessman Peter Doble opened the first Russian consular post in the Asia-Pacific region in Manila in 1817. Then, at the height of the Cold War, President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. traveled here to Moscow to open our diplomatic relations on June 2, 1976. The following year, we opened our embassy here in the most beautiful of the Seven Sisters so under President Bongbong Marcos, he wants to build bridges between nations, through peoples, through governments, and we pray for peace in this part of the world. And the message of Filipinos is, magbatian po tayo, magmahalan po tayo, that life is short, but Filipinos are always for peace. Mabuhay, happy Independence Day. It's such an honor and uh, privilege to, to be a part of this celebration. Um, and we are grateful at dapat dati panagawo paanagaan at we celebrate ang ating independence. Ito ay pinaglaban ng ating mga bayani. No? And uh, every day, 
Uh, meron tayo mga mayani uh, sa iba't ibang sektor ng ating society and all walks of life. Pagandang gabi po mula sa Moscow sa ating lahat ng mga kamapayan na mula sa iba't ibang mansa. Uh, alam po na tayo ay sigur subaybayan at uh, hindi lang ng mga Pilipino at ito sa Moscow sa Russia kundi sa buong daily. At uh, kami po ay nagamit lang ka na makiisat para sa inyo ay digital uh, technology para ipabot ang kasiyahan namin Pilipino community dito sa Moscow para ipagbiwang ang ating uh, pagkapilitino. Uh, alam niyo po dito sa Russia, tuwa-tuwa po kami lang kahit gano'n lang kanyang alam niyo naman po, napapalitaan niyo, napapasa niyo yung mga challenges sa Pilipino community dito sa Russia at uh, sa tulog po ng ating pamadaan sa tulong ng iba't kaisa natin. Maraming salamat po sa pag-aalala niyo at pagdasal niyo sa Pilipino community dito sa Russia at sa mga pistay ko kami lang dito. Maraming salamat po. Reporting from Moscow, Russia, this is Emi Coloma. We live in extraordinary times. Thanks, Emmy. Meanwhile, we have an exciting event as well to report from the heart of New York City. The 125th Philippine Independence Day Parade took place Sunday, showcasing the vibrant culture and rich heritage of the Filipino community. Let's join Joanne Soriano as she delves into the highlights of this celebration and witness the joy that emanated from the streets of the Big Apple. Joanne. The 125th Philippine Independence Day Parade is taking place along Madison Avenue in New York City. Three, two, one, Festivities kicked off with a flag-raising ceremony and ribbon-cutting, along with remarks from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and a proclamation read by New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Twenty seventh to thirty eighth streets were lined with spectators eager to show their love for the Philippines. Because I want to feel how I feel uh, like in the Philippines while I'm here in the United States, so I'm here in the Philippine Independence Parade. I want to celebrate the Philippine Independence Day because um, after seven years, this is the, the first, time. first time that I uh, again after seven years. Oh, I am so unbelievably proud to be a part of this celebration. 125 years of Filipina independence. And to be a part of a celebration, the largest one of its kind outside of the Philippines, celebrating Philippine independence, it's amazing. It was so wonderful to see such a huge crowd on a gorgeous, glorious day. It was like it was really meant to be. And to be able to not only spend it with one of my dear friends, Nina Pineda, but also with my children, to see this and to, to hand it down to them, how, how much pride I have being Filipino. I think it was just a perfect day. Colors of the Philippines filled the streets with people not only waving the flag, but wearing it. Thank you. Philippine fashion made a statement. From the colorful costumes to traditional Filipiniana to the contemporary. 141 participant groups marched the parade routes, including celebrities such as Miss Universe 2022, Arbani Gabriel. The parade culminated in a cultural festival with performances and delectable cuisine at the street fair. Very impressed with the Filipino American community here in New York. Uh, you can just see that how strong and how lively, and of course, there are what? Over 300,000. Filipino Americans living here in New York City and we're all very proud of all of you. Congratulations for this big event. Joanne Soriano, New York, New York, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. 
As my usual habit, I'd like to end the day on a positive note. Let's encourage and build each other up so that no one is left behind. And that's it for tonight's broadcast. I'm Alma Angeles. Stay in the news because we live in extraordinary times tonight.